So right here is my Better Fish Sorori Aquarium. I put 60 Better Fish and a ton of Neon Tetra in here about three months ago. Um, it it kind of looks a bit bad, but it's actually really healthy. Really, really does need sorted out. So around three months ago, I set up this tank. It was the first sort of build in the new studio. So we set up the substrate system the usual way, Nutribase down first, and then I sprinkled a load of root tabs and also compost, aquatic compost, and then capped it all with a sand. Well, kind of like a fine gravel, really. Up next was the hardscape. We went for like a root wood and then lots of rounded pebbles just to give details and then smaller stones and stuck it all together so it's completely solid. I then managed to salvage some plants from some other, other tanks. As I was moving studio, this worked out quite good. We've got booses, we've got all the ferns, we've got bulbitis, and then we put a lot of crypts in the foreground as well and just filled it up. It looked great just like this, but we also wanted to add an absolute ton of stems. Again, I was moving studio, so I took a ton out of all my other tanks, pretty much all of them, and put them all in here. Then adding some CO2 for the first time in one of my tanks, proper CO2. Um, it's like a DIY solution, but it lasts for ages, so good. Then me and Matt went to the shop, picked out the fish, and we put 60 betters in, and a big, big group of neon tetras as well. It's funny, look, you put 60 in, and the, you don't see them straight away of all those betters. They kind of hide, find their own hiding places, uh, but that's fine, it's like a, a cool sort of labyrinth for them to explore. It's still the same now, you see, that's why you don't see so many. There's only really 10 or so on show at any given time. But the tank turned out brilliant, it looks so good, literally from day one. So here is where we are today. I mean, most of the tank is looking pretty dark and that's because of the fact that this top section here, look, it's just completely chock-a-block full of plants, floating plants. It's just covering all of the light getting through and everything's sort of condensed into this middle section. So I'm thinking job number one is just to trim back the limna feeler that's sort of looping all the way over on the top. And once I've done that, the light will come in a bit more. I can definitely see what else I need to do then. Um, the back section as well, all the stems have grown right up tall. They're growing out of the wall, which is nice, but they look a bit funny. Yeah, you see that there? The Ludwigia there, you can see which is the red one, looks nice. But the limna feeler goes a bit scraggly and parts of it just stick to the glass. So I'm just going to trim those all back completely. If I trim them near the surface, they'll actually start to grow um, completely differently from where the trim point was out of water. So they'll grow immersed and they'll look like that straight away. They'll look great straight away and they'll grow really fast. But yeah, the first job has got to be all this limna feeler. Look at all the fish coming to the foot. There's so many betters coming here. They're all expecting feeding because I'm right by the tank. Right, I'm going to need my scissors. That's a bit of a mess, isn't it? <laughs> that needs sorting out. Take advantage of Kate's organizational skills. She's gonna be in a minute. She can, I can set that to the task. She already sorted outside for me. Um, there was some dandelions which are now actually growing in this little pot. And I'm gonna need that one there. It was good to get one of these little pots. You just hang it on like that and then you can just put your trimmings in or bucket on the floor. Right, at this stage, I'm not gonna overthink all of this too much. I'm just gonna start scooping plants out floating plants that is. These are red root floaters. We've got a little bit of duckweed in there. And then that's gonna allow me to see what plants I need to actually trim. Oh, it smells so good. It smells like fresh grass cuttings, that kind of thing. That's when you know your tank's doing well. And then to start with, this limna feeler here, I'm just gonna cut it back and not really look at where I'm cutting because it doesn't matter too much at the moment. I'm just trying to get some light into the tank. I'll be a bit more neater of it further back in a little bit when I can actually, those scissors are, Really annoying. Look at that, literally just clearing out, well, it's one pot's worth there, and that's pushed down as well, of Limnophila mainly, it's odd bit of Ludwigia in there as well, but it's opened it up massively. It's looking a lot brighter, but I can't stop there. I need to go even further than this. Need way more plants to come out because it's one of those tanks where if I just trim off the top and make it look pretty now, uh, I'm off to America, by the, by the time you see this, I should be in Texas at Dallas uh, for Aquashella. So this, by the time I come back, is gonna be just like massively overgrown again. I'm gonna go right down on this one, get it really tight and compact and low with the stem plants and hopefully that gives me a bit more time um, and just tames it all a little bit more. Oh yeah, here we go, look, right into the thick of it now. I'm not gonna hold back at all. It does feel such a shame 
to cut these because they're so beautiful, but there's not enough on them to really save them for other setups. I mean, there is, but if I keep holding out to do that, I'll never ever get stuff trimmed. That's what I've learned over the years. So quite often I'll think, oh, these stems here, for instance, and this one here, they look absolutely fantastic. Um, I'll wait to trim the whole tank up because when there's a nice setup, I can use them in that or something like that, or put them into another spare tank that then just becomes another thing to maintain. So no, really, I've got to, I've got to be able to trim them. I could take them to the shop, actually. I think I might do that. Take them to the shop as like live bunches and people can buy them there. I have got some other nice setups going on at the moment though. So, you know, a few of them, I can use a few of them. I do like to try and reuse where I can, especially these look, they just look absolutely gorgeous, that little gear there. I need to do something with it, don't I? <laughs> So I've done that side now, that's, oh, I don't want to say good because it, it never looks good when you've done it, but at least there is some structure there now. Now I do get a fair amount of stick online for setting up tanks and then say, like this one, three months in, breaking it down, starting again. The reason is, is because when I do this, it sort of pains me and I just think, oh, it looks worse than when I set it up. But I need to start changing the way I'm thinking. I've just clicked something in my head. When I've trimmed all this back in a moment, it is still going to look better than how it looked 10, 15 minutes ago when we started this. It was an overgrown mess and I've got to get past that thought of thinking, oh, it's a shame to trim the plants. The plants looked rubbish because they weren't getting any light. The whole thing's going downhill. I'm not enjoying it anymore. So this is a necessary part. And within a week or two, all of the areas I've just trimmed are gonna start sort of growing back. Like this whole section in the middle here, Every single stem that I've just trimmed, and they're all stems back there, is gonna have brand new two shoots, gonna look thick again, um, and then I'm gonna have to trim it all in, in no time at all. <laughs> I feel like I've got one good trim session in me per big tank, because after that, it's just a reset, isn't it? Um, depending on the tank. If it was a home tank, for instance, if I had it in my house, I would keep it looking like good all the time because that's different. But then in the studio, there's so many different tanks going on. I guess it's just a case of dividing my time. I think I need to teach Kate how to like trim all the plants and stuff because she'll be on it then. So next up is this foreground section here, which is Glossostigma mainly, and it's gone a bit crazy. Glossostigma is supposed to grow all horizontal and, co and cover, but it's been reaching for the light because obviously we've had the whole top section covered. Now look, we're all open this side. We're not that side at the moment. We will get to that in a bit. But yeah, I want to pull this in nice and tight all over. So any scraggly bits at all, I'm just going to come right down everything, no matter what the plant is. There's hair grass there. There's some uh, S repens. There's a bit of moss there. There's an old bulbitis leaf coming right down. Look, actually looks really, really good. Oh, there's some Monte Carlo here, which I didn't even know was there. And you can see here, look, this is Rotala Hatri, which is proper red and pink, but it's kind of a greeny color because again, there's been no light getting to it. Um, and that's just where it's creeped from this section here. So I'm gonna bring this one down tight as well. And then I'll just cut it flat. And then it will just, actually that one there looks creeping massively. I need to pull that right out. Look at that. Look at those roots on it. That's where it's grown horizontal in the Glossostigma and it's tried to root into the soil. Very clever. There we go, look, that is the Glossus Stigma pulled nice and tight, no sort of runners coming upwards. This area here is quite interesting. There's like a pocket underneath. For some reason, <laughs> the better fish always try and climb and make a little home in there. They're not right now because I've just disturbed it all. But yeah, I do not know what that's all about. So I didn't want to take it away. It's something they use. So I just sort of kept it there and trimmed over it. A little like hobbit home for them. So we've got that section sorted, the front section sorted. We now need to tackle that area. I'm just going to crack on with this. Very simple, just start hacking it out. Boom, we are trimmed. I don't know why I boomed that. Um, yeah, we're trimmed all over. Yeah, it does look better, doesn't it? actually see what's going on now. There's so many trimmed plants in that all on the surface, so I'm just gonna get those all scooped up. And then we can literally see where we're at, see what else needs to happen. Need to be really careful not to scoop up any of the fish when I'm doing this, because they're all around the surface at the moment. They think they're getting fed. I will feed them. Um, I'm not sure if I even need to do a water change yet. Normally, if I'm gonna do a water change, I feed the tank first, because it just makes sense. Any mess then gets taken out. There's so many fish here as well. Like, I didn't realize, I thought we'd lost quite a few of the betters, but it turns out they were just hiding the whole time. <laughs> OK, 
Kate's here, everyone. Kate, I've got a job for you over here. So uh, this here, yeah. Mm. What do you think? It's a mess. Can, uh, can you do your magic for me? <laughs> There's a lot, I don't, I don't think I need that many nets in one area. So maybe we can find a net area. A net, a net will be here later. <laughs> Is that what you want me to do? Yeah, please. Well, for, no, not, no, I mean, you know, first job, please. As I've said before, Kate is so good at doing all the organising and everything. She's done quite a lot of different things for me now in the whole studio and like ideas and that. I mean, you should see our house, it's ridiculous. Everything's got its place, isn't it, babes? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. So like, when, you, when two people have got certain skills, it's best, I always find it's best for, you know, I use my skills and Kate uses her skills and- You make the mess, so I can- I, I make the mess, <laughs> Yeah, but you don't mind, do you? Do you mind? Otherwise, I'm going to get in trouble. Everyone's going to be like, oh, it's 2023. <laughs> Kate was brought up in a very traditional family and um, she loves cleaning. You do love cleaning, don't you? <laughs> and who loves cleaning? Anyway, trimming session is now over. Water level is low. We'll get to that in a minute. But Kate, you just said, didn't you? She's just coming and seen this. Now, I'm, I'm the one saying, oh, I don't think this looks as good as, you know, I don't think it looks very good, but you actually think it looks uh, much, much better, don't you? Yeah. Which is interesting, I'd like to know your thoughts. Do you think this looks better than overgrown? Because Kate was just looking at this tank. So yeah, this is the Tetra tank. Now all the plants have grown forward here, the Limnophila, which always will, of course. And then all of the stem plants from the back area there have now grown out the surface, which I think looks fantastic. I just think it's such a natural look. Um, Kate thinks it looks a mess, that's a quote. But to me, I just, I just find this very natural. Now you could argue it's pulling, it's pulling a lot of the fish to the front, actually they're at the front because they want to be fed. Um, but I don't know, I just, this is the sort of viewing area. That front area looks shallower than it is, I guess. That's actually more than halfway to the back of the tank. But I suppose with the plants coming out this far, it can look, can look a little bit like that. There's plenty of room. But yeah, maybe it's time to do another, a big detail on this tank as well. This tank is over a month old now. The fish are getting chunky as well. Look at those red eye tetras, beautiful. They, they love going in and out of the plants. You see that? They're constantly doing that. That's really cool. The, the most I've seen from any fish I've ever kept actually, the red eye tetras doing that. They've still got a few actually at the shop if any of you are interested, go, go down there and get them. Anyway, look at this, I just spotted. Down the bottom here, the gloss of stigma, which just trimmed. It is purling like crazy. Plants. Plants will always do that when you trim them, to be honest. Uh, this tank is no longer running CO2. I took the CO2 off it because, like I said, it was just growing too fast and I'm not gonna put it back on either. It's just too crazy. I am, though, gonna service the filter. So yeah, I've got the CO2 canister, but uh, it's run out, it ran out of gas. I don't know, probably three weeks ago, I just didn't bother starting again. It's just way too fast for me, personally. But here's the filter, the Oase. Here is the uh, pre-filter section you can see there. Now, I know the insides will be absolutely perfect because that's not a lot amount of time for a canister filter. So I'm just gonna pop out the pre-filter, clean those pads, put them back in, that will be enough. Right, let's get this unplugged. To be honest, oh, no, I need to turn it off first, don't I? <laughs> that's not the plug. That's the one. Okay, unlock. One side, we can slide it out. Oh, it's heavy. So I'm not expecting this to be too bad. Um, it's not a massive bio load in the tank. Yeah, it's quite light, which tells me it's pretty good. Look at that. They're pretty much clean. I don't really even need to do this, to be honest. And that's, well, I don't think I, when was the last time I did that? Ah, that's why I cleaned this not too long ago, about three weeks ago. So yeah, there's, there's a bit of, bit in there it's worth giving it a rinse off isn't it but uh yeah well done yeah good filters these are the the biomasters no complaints at all really i have heard some people saying that there's get a lot of air build up in there and i did used to think that as well but if you do this bit here regularly like if you did this once a week and if you've only got one tank at home come on you can do that once a week uh you shouldn't get the air building up it should all be able to f uh, flow through completely fine that's what i found anyway so i'm just going to take a bit of tank water and not catching any fish Put that into the bucket and then I can just use that to clean up the sponges which are pretty clean but you know still quite a bit of gunk coming out there. Then just slide them oh, back onto the filter or the inlet tube I guess. Back into the cover, back in here slowly because it will try and overfill otherwise. And then we can switch it back on. 
there we go, a little bit of gunk coming out, but that's just absolutely normal because we've disturbed the filter a bit. Uh, you know, that'll clear in no time because it's a decent size filter, this one. That's, what's that? That's the, that's the big one, isn't it? That's the 800. So in fact, there's too much flow on this one for the inlet and outlet pipes I've got because it's one of those surface skimming ones. So what I do is I turn this bit here halfway, which means we get half the powerful outflow, but we're still using the full volume of the canister. And I think that's another reason why people get air into the system is if they've got that surface skimmer and you put that on full, it will just keep pulling air in even when you fully adjust it to open. So you, you've got to fiddle around with the settings a little bit just to get it right. This is not a sales pitch or anything, by the way. I in no way associated with Oase. It's just a good filter. I've heard people have problems and yeah, that's how I've resolved them. And look at this, look, cracking on, looking over here and Kate is sorting out the glass for me. Thanks, babes. God, what te teamwork, isn't it, look? Such good teamwork. Just stop chatting so much though. That's the only problem, look. We just needed to be a bit more quiet. We're trying, to, we're trying to get work done here, Kate. Oh, and now also, we've got all this dirty water, which is brilliant for our plants, house plants. Which, to be fair, Kate, we need to water. It's, uh, I think it's been a while. It's been like two weeks. I think they're pretty dry. I think the plants are pretty dry. That was your, that was your task. You, you did say you'd keep up on that. I have been over watering them. <laughs> They're still alive though, that's the main thing, they're still alive. So we've got a whole bucket of trimmings there. I uh, should be able to put them to good use. Now the water level's low, and now's the time to decide if we need to do a water change or not. Now I have not done a water change on this tank since I set it up, like a few days later I did one just to remove some of the tannins from the new wood that we put in. But that's not me saying don't do water changes, that seems to be a big thing at the moment. I quite often don't do water changes in a lot of my tanks, but that, I'd never tell you not to do them, I'd tell you to do them when they're needed. That's the answer to it really. Should you do water changes if they're needed? That's it. So I know this water here will be absolutely perfect. I mean, you, when you look at a tank, it's growing that well and everything's in balance, it smells good. There's not gonna be a problem with the water. If you're starting to get a few fish dying randomly, babes, could you just be quiet for a second? <laughs> if you're starting to get a few fish sort of dying off and things like that, instantly you need to test your water, what's going on? And that's before you change the water because you need to know what is actually the issue is. You can't know that without knowing the parameters. So for this one here, I'm not gonna water change because I know I don't need to, but that doesn't mean I'm telling you never to water change, okay? I just wanna put that out there because I don't want people thinking that I advocate never changing water. It's completely dependent on the tank, the situation, what's going on with the tank. You know, for instance, a heavily stocked Malawi tank I'm never going to tell you not to change your water, would I? I mean, that would be ridiculous. But what I am going to do is top up the water. This is basically what I always do. You can actually see on the glass, kind of like where the mineral deposits are as it's sort of evaporated. So I have to top this up, not that regularly, because uh, I don't heat the tank, so it's the same temperature the water is as the ambient air temperature. And that kind of stops a lot of the evaporation. So that amount that's gone down there is probably from the last like, I don't know, three weeks, something like that. Kate's taking the mick out of me. She's just saying that every time I don't know a time frame, everything's three weeks. It was three weeks ago. I think that's because that's about how long a cycle of different things take. I don't touch most tanks for like three weeks. Like that's pretty much standard in the studio. So here I've got a water butt and in the bottom of it is a pump. The pump then has a pipe that comes out into this reel and then there's a tap there and then I can just fill it up nicely from this. So that's how I do my water changes. The water is already the exact same temperature to go in, which is perfect because I pre-fill this up days in advance. And then we just hook it over the edge, turn it on and leave it. So that's everything now almost done. I just want to give the glass a scrape and I think it's pretty good. Uh, I think Kate, you did this not too long ago, didn't you? Couple of weeks. So no, three. We always say three weeks. Oh yeah, three weeks. <laughs> but yeah, just give it a look. Might as well just do the last finishing touches, don't we? <laughs> Fish are going nuts. <laughs> Not yet. I'll feed them actually. So then we want to do the top pieces of the glass as well. I just get a piece of paper towel, run along it like that. Good amount of force. Same across the top, and then same across the front. Obviously, that's on all four sides as well. And then we can clean the front glass as well. I like to spray into the paper so you're not getting it all in the tank at all. Dab it about a bit and then just dry it all off. And don't forget to do this because if you've gone to the extent and the effort of what we've just been through, you don't want to spoil it all by having smears all over the front of your glass, which you're inevitably going to get 
You can see it all there from doing the maintenance. And then here it is, guys, the final result. Looking pretty nice, actually, I have to say. We can see a load of the betters. Now look at this beauty up here. Wow, what a stunner. You like queen of the tank, aren't you, I think? <laughs> now, obviously, one issue at the moment is that all of the color has sort of gone because we've had to trim it right back. So it's back down to the sort of bare areas of the stems um, and the Ludwigia there as well, you see. But that'll actually sprout out in no time. It'll be like a couple of weeks and all of those will have brand new shoots, two of them on each. Everywhere will actually, to be honest. And there's that background area right back there as well. So much color will be popping out of that. You just sort of have to, just have to settle that you've got a fully green tank for just a little while, which is absolutely fine by me, to be honest. And even I have got to admit that this looks so much better than just that overgrown look. Oh, fun fact for you, this Endler Guppy that you can see here, absolutely brilliant coloration on it. I didn't even know that was in there. It must have gone in as a baby um, or a female that I put in there must have given birth. And it's about the only one that survived by obviously staying right down in amongst the plants because I'm pretty sure the betters would just pick off a little baby endler in no time, wouldn't they? Yeah, fully grown up in this tank and he's an absolute stunner. I might move him across with my other endlers, to be honest. Or should I just keep him in here? I mean, I feel like it's his tank now. It feels a bit wrong to remove him. But yeah, let's give these guys a nice feed. Tap, 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 tap. They all know what's coming. So I've got a flake here, aquarium flake. It's the one I use for everything. I'm just gonna break that up on the surface. And as they peck at it, it'll all fall down and go to the fish that's staying down low. Some betters just stay down low. I guess it's a territorial thing. No, it's a crown better here coming up. Nope, stay in. Come on, you can do it. Be brave, little girl. And you can tell she's not very dominant because she's a lot skinny in the rest of them, which means that she doesn't get much food. So you have to sort of watch for that. There we go, we've spot fed her there. She's getting loads. So there we go then, a full tank detail. I think that's turned out brilliantly, better than I expected it to, to be honest. And it's actually set the wheels in motion. I'm gonna go and start doing this to all my other tanks now, bring them right back. And then hopefully that way I can continue to enjoy them for a little bit longer, rather than breaking them down so soon. I've got quite a few empty tanks still. There's no need to break down any of the tanks that I've set up in the studio for a good while yet, hopefully. <laughs>